a new state park in a new state, new camera gear, and chefing it up with another new recipe. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. Woo! So I am staying at Seminole State Park in Georgia. Anytime I stay in Georgia, I like to say Georgia. Let's give you a quick tour of the park, tell you a little bit about how easy it is to get in and out and park, uh, take you on a hike, uh, and just show off a little bit of where I'm staying. Seminole State Park is located in Donaldsonville, Georgia, and it is absolutely fantastic. They have tent camping, RV camping and cottages. The Seminole State Park is absolutely gorgeous. Take a look. This is the view from my rig um, right next to the water. Absolutely fantastic. It is a little hot and yes, there are gators around, but what a beautiful spot. You've got easy pull through sites here at the park. Uh, a lot of spaces, some right up against the water, some tucked away. Lots of choices for you when you stop. The bathhouse is nice and clean, uh, big stalls, uh, washer and dryer as well. The park in general, also a great place to get your hike in. Okay, so we're at a new park, uh, Seminole State Park in Georgia. And uh, I'm gonna go on my first hike of uh, the trip. Uh, always love that first hike. It's always new and exciting. Um, so let's go see how these trails are here so I can recommend whether or not you guys should come on out and try them. So these trails are nice and wide, easy to navigate. Uh, looks like you have a couple of different options. So uh, when you get out here and you're out uh, hiking, uh, you can go several different ways and explore a lot of water around too and I'll show you that in a little bit so it's nice to see that uh, but then again you know just being out in the wilderness or a state park uh, is so much nicer than being behind a desk uh, punching some numbers right <laughs> okay, you can see here this is what I'm talking about in terms of water that's uh, looks like it's part of the lake Looks like a pretty cool bridge. Let's see if we can find that. Uh, but again, just beautiful scenery. Okay, so here's that bridge uh, we saw a little bit earlier. Gonna go ahead and walk across it, and it's really pretty. Part of the wetlands. I just wonder, like, how old this is, you know? Like, well, you know, the bridge is obviously newer, but just this whole kind of nature stuff. The other thing I wonder is, are there any gators in there? Ooh. Still haven't seen a gator on a hike yet, but I, I know I'm going to one of these days. <laughs> couple of days. So that's it, Seminole State Park in Georgia. If you get a chance to stop on by, check it out. Pay a little extra uh, and get one of the lakeside properties. Uh, they're pull through for the most part and they're absolutely fantastic. My primary camera source for doing all my videos is my iPhone. I use that mostly uh, for everything because it's with me all the time and I can whip it out and shoot something right away. 
but since I've been doing more and more videos, I have wanted to upgrade uh, some of my camera gear. And today I'm going to show you three pieces uh, of new gear that should help uh, in the future with all of my videos. Let's check them out. So as you can see, three pieces here, all from Amazon. I will provide links below. Let's uh, open them up and show you what I have. Let's open up the first package. Here you go, product number one. Open this up, and you can see this. It's a new video light. And to go with that new light, package number two. Voila! It's a new table tripod. Uh, I have a mini tripod that I use already, but this is going to be nice as well, and you'll see why. And finally, something I hope will help with some of the vlogs coming up. Here we go. Let's open this up. And voila. You can't really see it because there's a, a, a sticker over it, but it is a new digital camera. It's going to help with vlogging. box let's open it up and reveal the camera instructions here always helpful and yes I'm a guy I do read the instructions got the battery uh, it comes with a couple of different lens attachments um, this is the power cord uh, looks like the strap um, this is one of the best parts about it it's a wide angle lens Let's see if we can open this up real quick. I wanted to make sure that I got a wide angle lens for vlogging purposes so that you can see everything. There you go there. And then, here you go, the camera itself. The nice part about this camera, so it has this flip top here, which is nice. It'll help me when I need to vlog. What do you say we set it up and check a little of the video? Okay, so this is the first camera test. This is the normal lens for the new camera. This is what it looks like. Uh, you gotta figure out how to start looking at this one. But this is on the normal lens, uh, and it is not the iPhone. Uh, we're gonna now try and put on the wide angle lens and see what kind of difference it makes. Wide angle lens, let's see what kind of difference it makes. Now the wide angle lens is on. Let's see how it looks. Wide angle lens. Not sure if you can tell the difference. I can't yet. I'm gonna have to look at the footage and see. Uh, but regardless, I have a new vlog camera. Which one should I vlog on? I'll go back and forth. This is kind of interesting. I don't know. We're just gonna kind of shoot and see. Check out, love the new equipment. Love getting new stuff to make videos better for you. So I'm keeping it real with you. Uh, I picked up this camera off of Amazon. I, again, I'll put the link underneath below. Uh, it had a flip. Uh, it was nice. It was supposed to be a great alternative uh, or thing to add to my arsenal. Um, but it was not as expensive as some of the other, you know, more user-friendly vlogger cameras. Uh, this one was only about a hundred bucks. Uh, it had a wide angle lens that it came with, a lot of accessories, and I thought that this would be a good addition uh, to the channel. However, uh, the audio is really, really bad. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit here. Okay, so this is the new vlog camera. It's, uh, I guess what I would call a left-handed camera. Um, I can hold it uh, to the right here, but uh, just feels a little bit easier on the left hand. Um, trying to get used to where I have to look um, so that it looks like I'm looking normal. And so you kind of get the idea. So uh, unfortunately too, because I bought this and held on to it before I checked it out, the return date is now over. 
so I am stuck with a $100 lesson. My grandmother always used to say, lazy man works the hardest, uh, and that's what I have done now. I was lazy, bought a cheap camera that is not going to help, and now I'm out 100 bucks. So I want to give you the highs and lows of everything that I'm doing with this channel and uh, with RVing, uh, and this particular camera is a low. It is time to chef it up, and tonight we're doing an Argentinian rubbed uh, ribeye steak with some chimichurri sauce. Uh, we're going to throw in some new potatoes and uh, a vegetable or two uh, to get this thing all set to go. But the first thing is first is putting together the dry rub for the Argentinian rubbed uh, ribeye steak and also building out the chimichurri sauce. You want to have that uh, get some time to marinate and all of those flavors get together. So let's get started. All right, let's get the rub going. It starts with some garlic. We're gonna get that in there. Uh, we're gonna use some oregano, which will go in next. Some basil or basil, depending on what you like to call it. I call it basil. Uh, we're gonna add a little paprika, which will go in. And then we're gonna add some cracked rosemary and then some salt and pepper. Pepper, salt. I'm gonna just mix that up. That's gonna go on the steak here in a second. Now once you have all the spices put together you want to get a little olive oil onto the steak and then rub the spices in and let that set for a little while. Now you only need a little bit of olive oil to put on the steak just to coat it a little bit. Rub that down, rub it on both sides. And then you want to add your Argentinian rub on here. And get that nice and coated. Both sides. And then we just let it sit. So the rub for the steak is on, it is setting, and I'll put that back in the refrigerator and let that rest for a while. Now it's on to the chimichurri sauce. Same kind of situation, you wanna cut everything up, meld all the flavors together, and let that set for at least an hour before you start to use it. For my chimichurri, I'm using parsley, basil, some thyme, and then some spices to really make this taste well, taste good. Uh, also, obviously, got to get that garlic in there. Now, there are so many ways to make chimichurri sauce. This is how I'm doing mine. It's now time to get everything in the bowl. We're going to add some olive oil, some soy sauce, and some vinegar, and get everything all mixed up. Okay, so into the pot, there goes my parsley, my basil. We're going to put in some fresh thyme, which we'll just scrape off here. Get that in. Love the smell of fresh thyme. Just makes everything so much nicer. I'm gonna get it all in. There you go. There. Then let's get some garlic. We're using minced garlic already cut. Get that in. Uh, I will of course put a link to all of this in the show notes below. Uh, oregano re le leaves and we're gonna put a little pepper little salt and then we add some olive oil some soy sauce and then a little bit of apple cider vinegar and then we're gonna mix it all up and let that start to meld together and let that set mm, looks good already the chimichurri mixture is all together. It is now just time for it to rest. And uh, in a couple of hours, it's time to put everything together. Got the fire started and we need it to get hot quick because as you can maybe see, the clouds are coming in and it could rain. Okay, time to get the steak on the grill. Uh, this is gonna go quick, which is nice. Mm. The grill is nice and hot and ready for the steak. Let's get that steak on. Now, 
Now while the steak is cooking up, time to get the potatoes and vegetables on. Okay, this is an easy one. We're gonna start by putting some onions into the pan. Get those going. Want to sweat those down a little bit. Okay, so I've added a little butter to the pan. We're going to get that going in, and then we're going to add in our potatoes. Get those going as well. Make sure they are parboiled. So what I did was I uh, put them in the microwave for a little bit, uh, got them nice and soft, uh, just to start things off. Next up, we're going to get in mushrooms and some squash. Again, toasting everything, getting it all around the pan. Okay, so everything looks like it's going well. Now we want to start putting in some of the herbs. And here is a mixture of some parsley, uh, a little bit of thyme. Then we're going to add in some garlic powder, some paprika, and then some salt and pepper, and that's it. We'll mix it up a little bit, cover, and let cook. So the steak is done, it's a little charbroiled, but that's okay. Uh, it's still nice and medium rare, which is the way I like it. Uh, and it is now time to pick it up. So the steak and the vegetables are all ready. It's time to plate everything up and eat this meat. And there you have it, Argentinian rubbed steak with a chimichurri sauce. Let's taste it. Excellent. And the potatoes are great as well. I'll put all of the information on how to make this in the description below and um, go ahead and try and make it. I think you'll really enjoy it. But that's going to do it right now for this edition of uh, Chefing It Up here in the RV. If you want to follow me, follow me along on social media at RV Jedi. Uh, that's everywhere. Pinterest, the Facebook, the Gram, all over. And of course, you can follow me on my blog at RVJedi.com. Hey, get out there in RV. Don't hold back when you're cooking. Enjoy yourself and go out and have a great time.